Hello, pre -cal. This is to be observed after class on Tuesday, that's November 15th, and we'll be solving trig equations in preparation for tomorrow's uh, test. The first one I want to practice, write it down in your comp book so you have credit for this. Cosine squared theta plus 8 equals 9. And that one, I'm going to ask you to find all the solutions. And there are going to be 10 on this test. So I'm going to go over the main complications that you will meet. And on this one, we will, we're going to solve, and we're going to get cosine of theta by itself. So I'm going to move the 8 over by subtraction, so the 9 minus 8 will become a 1. And then I want cosine instead of cosine squared, so I'm going to take the square root of both sides. When I do that, I get the desired cosine theta on the left, and remember, when you take the square root of both sides, you get a plus or minus situation. If you forget that, you lose some of your solutions. So plus or minus 1. So where does the cosine equal that? So let's look at monkey math. 1, 0, 0, 1. Minus 1, 0. And 0, minus 1. We're looking for a first coordinate that's either plus 1 or minus 1. So here's 1 and here's 1. This occurs at zero radians. This occurs at pi radians. And we can capture all of them by starting here and spinning pi each time. So I'm going to write zero radians plus pi n. Do you see how that will capture this one and then keep going around and get the infinity, infinity number of answers? Some of you aren't comfortable with that, so we don't have to write the zero. We can write it just like that. So theta equals pi n. Um, if you're not comfortable with that, you can write 0 plus 2 pi n. That means you're starting here and going around one whole circle, and then doing pi plus 2 pi n. So we don't need the 0. But these two answers are the same as that one answer. So. Let's go on and look. So the complication or the warning I have in this problem is the plus or minus when you take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to be really disappointed if you forget it. So think on that, dream on that. I think I'll leave that unit circle up if it's not too much in the way. So I can build on that. The second one, secant squared theta. Uh, plus 8 equals 10. Alright, write this one down and move the 8 over and I get secant squared theta equals 2 and I take the square root of both sides which recreates the plus or minus square root of 2. Now, the complication on this one is that I end up with a secant and I prefer to work in sine, cosine, and tangent. So I'm going to remember this means plus or minus square root of 2 over 1. So I'm going to stand this on his head. What is the reciprocal of secant? It is cosine. So I'm going to turn this on its head. And I get plus or minus 1 over the square root of 2. So therefore, where do I find that on the unit circle? Well, it doesn't look familiar, so when that happens, let's rationalize. So we multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2, and I get square root of 2 over 2. Now that looks more familiar. So I can find that, again, it's plus or minus. I can find that here, where the right in the middle of that quadrant, square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. And over here, it's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2 and positive square root of 2 over 2. Here, we have a similar spot, and here. So all four of those are, are going to be in the answer, because they all have a first coordinate 
of square root of 2 over 2 or negative square root of 2 over 2. So where are they? They are at pi over 4. They are at uh, 1 fourth pi, 2 fourths pi, 3 pi over 4. Uh, 4 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. Notice I didn't write the last two because I can capture or grab those with this one. Pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 are pi uh, units away, pi radians away. So I'm just going to capture it by saying pi over 4 plus pi n. And I'm going to say 3 fourths. So that captures this one and this one. So now to get these two, I'm going to do 3 pi over 4 plus another pi n. And that will capture these two. So um, can you see a way of combining these into one statement? So that we haven't talked about that. But notice these are the same distance away from each other. So I could say pi over 4 plus how many radians to get to this one, and then also to this one, and this one, and this one. Pi over 2. So if I do pi over 4 plus pi n pi over 2 n, that will cause me to go 90 degrees or pi over 2 and capture all of them in one statement. So this is the answer that you're used to giving. This one is just as good, even better. All right, forgot to time this always. All right, I'll just do one more real quick and I'll shut it down and do the other two. There's five all together. All right, so the complication in the first one was plus or minus when you take the square root of both sides. The complication in the second one was also take the square root of both sides, plus or minus, but it was how to deal with the secant by using the reciprocal of both sides. What complication will she put up next? Sine squared theta equals 2 plus 2 cosine theta. Alright, on this one, we are going to see that we have a cosine and a sine. So we can't work in two different ones normally, so we're going to switch either sine to cosine or cosine to sine. Always replace the one that's squared. Now, when it comes to memory work, you've already seen you're going to have to know the unit circle. So here is another bit of memory work, and, and it works like this. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals what? You have some passport memory work coming up that will include that, but hopefully you remember it's the loneliest number one. All right, so rearranging that, we see that sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. And when we solved and, I mean, when we verified and verified trig IDs and what was the other thing, simplified trig expressions, we use that all the time. So we're going to replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared theta. And now we're all in cosine. And we're ready to go with that. So let's pull everything over to the left and set it equal to zero. I think I can drop these parentheses. Minus 2, minus 2 cosine theta when I pull everything over. Combining my terms, I just have a 1 and a minus 2. So that will give me a minus 1. And now I prefer to work in positives when I factor, so I'll multiply this through by a, a negative 1, and it doesn't change the 0. All right, so when you have three terms like that, uh, we're going to factor them, and when we factor them, we see if they have anything in common in all three terms, but they don't. So the only thing I can do is factor it like this where the first times the first gives me this, so it must be cosine. And the last times the last has to give me this, 
1 times 1 has to give me that. Let's check the inner product, plus 1, outer product, plus 1, add those. It's the FOIL method. You came knowing about that. You came to my class knowing about that. So it works the same with trig. So now we have two branches. Set each one equal to 0 because when something times something equals 0, either or or, I could hear you. All right, so I'm setting this one equal to zero, and I get cosine of theta equals minus one. I think we met that on a previous problem, and my, uh, my unit oval <laughs> disappeared. So putting in the monkey math again, one zero, zero one, negative one, 0 and 0, negative 1. Which one has a first coordinate of minus 1? It is right there. So that is pi radians. And pi radians, it has no other answer, no other first, first coordinate of minus 1. So in order to get an infinitude of answers, we're going to have to add 2 pi n. So theta equals pi plus 2 pi n. This branch is identical, so I don't have to work it out. All right, let me turn off the video and go ahead and do the last two problems. And the complication in this one, before I erase it, is the fact that we had to change the sine squared to cosine squared using a trig ID. All right. Be right back.